En we gaan nu direct knallen uh, met het allereerste panel wat we gaan doen. En dat is met Eliza Taylor. Jullie kennen haar waarschijnlijk het meest van de 100. Zijn de fans van de 100 in de zaal? Ja. Ik ga het heel kort houden hoor. Ik ga niet lang lullen, want hoe langer ik lul, hoe korter we hebben. Dus geef een heel hard applaus voor Eliza Taylor! Eliza, welkom. It's so good to be here. Yeah. Have you ever been to the Netherlands? I have never been here. No first time? First time. What's it like? How is it for you? It's amazing. Yeah. I'm loving it. Yeah. How long are you here right now? Um, I got in yesterday morning at 9 a.m. and uh, got to walk around. And, yeah, it's just stunning. And you only been to Utrecht, Utrecht right now? Um, Amsterdam as well. Really? Yeah, yeah. Which one is your favorite so far? Uh, I don't want to answer that question in case <laughs> I divide the crowd. <laughs> no worries, no worries. <laughs> um, first of all, of course, you are a very big actress right now. What inspired you to become one? Um, well, I started when I was really young. I started when I was 11 years old and, um, yeah, I was... I don't know, then my first day on set, I was just like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I still feel that way. I just love it. And which set was it? Which was your first set? Oh, my, my first show was called Pirate Islands. Pirate Islands? Yes. And what was it like? It was like a fantasy show. It was a kid's show. All right. Yeah, um, where these kids get sucked into a computer game and they have to fight pirates and find the treasure to get out. You were one of the pirates? I was not. I was one of the kids. No way! <laughs> yeah. What was it like? So you were a kid on your first show? Yeah. And what was that like, to be a child actor? Well, as kids we just want to play make-believe, right? So I loved, you know, that I got to dress up and, and be in all these incredible, like, fantasyful situations. Yeah. And uh, it was a blast. It was a kid's dream, really. Oh, how nice. Yeah. And uh, when I'm talking to you right now, I just can't uh, compare it with other people I comprehend because you have a really thick Australian accent. <laughs> and yeah. when you watch your other work, you have a perfect fluent American accent. <laughs> how did you do that? Um, I think that growing up with a lot of American television really helped. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, yeah, you just, I mean, a lot of practice and a lot of coaching and, yeah, hopefully I've done my job. If you didn't know I was Australian, that's a good thing. Yeah, of course I know. You, you can hear it very clearly. So. <laughs> uh, and uh, is doing accents easy for you? Can you only do American and Australian or...? Oh, yeah. I, I've realized that I'm very limited in the accents I can do. I, I can do general American, I can do British. Yeah. But that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, and of course, uh, I was very curious because uh, you broke through with The 100. Did you know that The 100 was going to be such a huge show? No, I don't think any of us could have imagined that it would be what it's become. Um, I, I think just the, what's amazed me is that um, I, I was doing a convention two weeks ago and a lot of the people who were in my um, in my Q and A were 14 years old, 15 years old. Like when the show came out, they must have been children. So I think the fact that it's gone on to streaming has given it new life and has expanded it so that um, a new generation of people can watch the show. And so it just kind of keeps on bubbling along, and it's awesome. Oh, nice. And were you always uh, because you came from Australia? Did you move to Hollywood with a dream, or did you already have a job when you came to Hollywood? I did not have a job. I, I had a dream, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I got to LA when I was, I think, 22, and um, I was just really lucky. By the time I was 23, I was doing the 100. Oh, really? Yeah. Was, wasn't it scary to move to America on your own? Yeah, it was scary, but I was, um, I, I think, naive in a lot of ways just i i really believed that i was gonna make it and um 
thankfully, it worked out. <laughs> oh man, and how did it work out? Because a lot of people here in the audience might have the same dream as you did. Do you have any tips for them, or uh, tricks, or...? I think just don't take, um, don't take the criticism to heart, or, you know, there's a lot of rejection mm -hmm. in this industry, um, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't mean that you're, uh, you failed, you know, it's just that you weren't right for that role, and if you love it, you just persevere. Oh, nice, oh, nice. Um, and when you got the call to that you could be in the hundred, what was your first reaction? How did you feel? Because you were broke in LA, you all of a sudden you had a job. How, what was it like for you? I was broke in LA. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> um, it was incredible. It was the best uh, gift I could have ever been given. It changed my life uh, entirely. At that point in time, I didn't know just how much it was going to change my life. Um, but. Yeah, I was overjoyed. I was completely overjoyed to have been um, given this character who was so kick-ass and so strong and determined and, you know, to, I, I mean, up until that point, I'd only really played, like, the blonde ditzy, you know, <laughs> the every girl. Um, and Clark was so different from that. Really intimidating. Very scary at times. What is the most fun thing about playing somebody who's so big and intimidating on the set or on the show? I mean, I think I just playing Clark. I got to do a lot of things that me as Eliza would never <laughs> have the guts to do. So it was amazing. Well, what was the most fun thing you did as Clark? Ooh. I think like playing with uh, wire work where you like you have to jump from great heights and that was really fun. Yeah? Yeah, I love that stuff. Oh nice, yeah. oh, great. Um, and now of course uh, the show has ended. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it like for you to read the final script, to, be, to know this is the end of it all? It was really bittersweet, you know, because we had been working on this thing for seven years, nearly eight years, um, and I, I felt like I'd become so much a part of Clark and she'd become a part of me, and it was really hard to imagine a life where I wasn't going to be playing her, you know, um, but at the same time, all good things do have to come to an end, and, you know, there was a lot of excitement about what was to come next, and unfortunately the pandemic came next, <laughs> so. <laughs> really, did you have any projects during the pandemic that got shut down? Uh, no, I didn't, no, we, well, The hundred nearly got shut down. We shot right up until um, the borders closed in Canada, so we were like, we had to s squeeze all of the last episode into a few days to get it done in time. Really? And then the world shut down. So you were doing days like from nine, uh, nine in the morning until one in the night? Oh yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah it was crazy. But doesn't, um, doesn't that exhaust you? I mean, for you as an actress, you have to be fit all the time, know the lines. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you kind of get into a rhythm, but I mean, at the beginning of every season, I was kind of like, oh, okay, here we go, 15 hour days. <laughs> um, it takes a bit of getting used to, but once you're in it, you, it's, it's okay. All right, all right. Yeah. Um, and I was uh, just curious right now, have you guys ever done a reunion? A reunion? Yeah, with the whole cast just coming together because... No, I mean, we get, thankfully we get to meet each other at these conventions and we get to see each other again, but we haven't gotten everybody in one room before, but that's a really good idea. Yeah, you should. We should. It's really nice, you know? Yeah. I like the uh, reunion shows, like iCarly, Friends, and you name them. Yeah. Yeah, iCarly is something different, but... <laughs> Uh, and I was just curious, because you have been to a lot of comic cons, right? Have you ever done cosplay, just walking around, or would you ever do it? No! But no? I love cosplay. Like, yeah. I love watching people, I, like, I love all the parades that they do at conventions. I mean, you guys are amazing. Like, you really turn it on. It's so, like, and some people spend, like, a year making their costume from scratch. I just find it inspiring. Like, it's amazing. 
And uh, uh, would you, if you ever would do cosplay, as which character? Which character would you choose? Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are you into the anime? Uh... No, I'm not. But that show, I used to wake my mum up at six o'clock in the morning so that I, I, she could turn on the TV for me so I could watch Sailor Moon. I was obsessed. Oh, really? As a child, yeah. Oh, man, I would love to see you walk around as Sailor Moon. It would be really fun. I'm going to do it one day, guys. Just I'm going to do it. And uh, while well, on the topic of pop culture, is there any franchise that you would love to be a part of? It could be Star Wars, Harry Potter, Marvel. Uh... I mean, it's. I think it's an actor's dream to be a part of like the Marvel universe. It would be so cool. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I yeah. I think that, yeah. I'd have to say Marvel. Yeah, you would love to have superpowers. Which? Yes. What would be your superpower then, if you could choose any superpower? I would love to fly. Fly, just fly in general. Yeah. <laughs> just without any powers, just. Just be able to go. Ah, great. And uh, nowadays, I've uh, seen some stuff of you, uh, which I really enjoyed. Was I didn't know that way back in the days you did vines. I did what? You did vines. You were on vine, right? Oh yes, yeah. Yes. I loved vine. <laughs> Would you ever do anything like that again? Because now we have TikTok nowadays. I know, and you know, the thing about TikTok is I don't know how to use it properly. <laughs> Vine was so simple. It was just like, it was so easy. And now with TikTok, there's so many editing tools and I need to, I need someone to give me like a crash course in TikToking so that I can do well, it. If you have 30 minutes to spare later on, I can help you. Yes, please. I, 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 I loved your vines, but it was so goofy, so weird. Very weird. Yeah, you should bring them back. <laughs> um, and of course, I know you do singing and uh, guitar. Oh, I did. You, you stopped doing it? I kind of stopped doing it. Why? Yeah. I, you know, I kind of, I felt like I hit a, a bit of a block where I actually, I really needed to learn how to play guitar better and how to sing better to be where I wanted to be and I I didn't spend the time to do that so but I've had a few people request that I get back on it so you never know I might I might give it another shot well, I can't help you with that so if, no, only you can't help, just the TikTok yeah just the TikTok <laughs> you, won't, you don't want to hear me sing so. okay. Um, and uh, for everybody in the audience, if you have a question for Eliza, you can get up in front of the microphone, which is right in front of the stage, and uh, in like one minute or anything, we will uh, do some questions from the audience. Because now I'm just curious, before we do the questions from the audience, what is the weirdest question you have ever gotten? Or the best? <laughs> The best is better. But Someone once asked me if they could have a lock of my hair. Really? Did you gave it? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty weird. It was really weird. Yeah. And uh, one last question from me, just out of curiosity. If you uh, wouldn't have become an actress at all, what would you have become? Which job would you like to do? Um, I love working with children, so I feel like, you know, I would have loved to have taught, yeah. um, taught kids, but I really wanted to be a marine biologist. Marine biologist? When I was young, yeah. Oh, why? I was obsessed with the ocean. Right. My whole bedroom was like dolphins, whales, sharks, you name it. Like It looked like an underwater scene when I was a kid. Really? Yeah. And what is your favorite uh, animal then from the world? I love uh, the whale shark. And the beluga. Oh, wow. Yeah. I could never have guessed this. I love it. <laughs> Let's go to the first question. Good morning. Hi. Uh, can you tell us something about your new show, Antony? Could you say it one more time, a bit more into the microphone? Can you tell us something more about your new show, Antony? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's so weird that we can talk about our shows yes. again. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm. I'm I've become a season regular on season two of Quantum Leap, which is, has been an absolute dream. Like, not only do I get to stay in the sci-fi world, but um, I'm playing a character who is a, uh, a physicist, an, an incredible mind, um, and another 
kick-ass, strong female character, except she's in the 1940s, 50s, and, well, who knows when we'll see her next, but do you guys get Quantum Leap yet? I've seen bits and pieces here. It's not airing here yet? I'm not sure. Ah. I'm also not sure, so I mean, mm. probably some... I would say why you can watch it, but... Yeah, well, I, I hope that you guys get to see it because it's, um, it's a really fun show and I'm loving it. Well, I have fun with it and have a nice day here. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for the question. And I was curious because uh, right until like one week ago there was a big actor strike and it ended nowadays. How do you feel about the strike being just ending right now? Oh, I feel really relieved. I mean, it, it put a lot of our crew and, um, you know, in a really difficult position. Like, a lot of people um, weren't able to work. So just to have that industry back up and running is great. And also, I mean, in terms of the strike, it, it, the industry has changed so much over the last few years that it was really important for us to have a contract that reflected those changes. And, and I'm really happy to have a fair deal. Nice to hear. And uh, one more thing, because uh, we couldn't ask any questions about any work that you did, like until a week ago. So uh, the people from the Comic Con, they gave me a whole list with funny questions. And I just wanted to ask like one or two of them. Tomorrow I'll be asking some other ones. But one thing that I found really funny, I was like, well, who knows? What is the best Christmas present you have ever gotten? Or the best present in general? Because it's almost Christmas. I was like, oh yeah. my gosh. Um, I can't think. I've gotten so many amazing presents. Um, I, th I mean, this is how, this shows my age now, but like I, uh, I got a pair of slippers and, and a dressing gown, <laughs> oh, no. a robe from Bob for my birthday this year, and it was the best gift ever. <laughs> I am the comfiest person now. I am so comfortable. Um, yeah, that's it's, where I'm at. It's a great present. Yeah, yeah. I will write it down. Let's go to the next one. Hi, Eliza. Welcome to Holland. Hi, thank you. You're welcome. I have a question. Uh, you play in season six as Clark and as jo Josephine. How was that for you? Oh, yeah. Um, that was amazing because I think up until season six, I had played, you know, the one character, Clark, who, which was amazing. But um, what the writers gave me the opportunity to do was to play another character within the same show, which was a real challenge and it, it made me work ten times harder to kind of differentiate the two. And not only was I playing um, two different characters, I had to, like, I had to play Clark, pretending to be Josephine, pretending to be Clark. It was a mind F. Um, <laughs> but it was great. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. And uh, one question from me then. What was it like to play to play such a female icon on a pop show? So oh. such a big inspiration, I guess, for so many women. Yeah, it was amazing. I feel really honoured, honestly. I feel so honoured to have been able to play her for so many years, and the fact that it's helped so many people um, is just icing on the cake, really. Yeah, to break through that glass ceiling of just a blonde pop girl. Right. Said, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Oh, I love. I'm very lucky. so far. I'm so excited to get back to work and finish the rest of the series. Um, so that's my newest thing and I'm, I'm all in on it at this point. I'm all loving it. <laughs> Maybe something else also that you have in mind that you want to go for? There is nothing else that I have in the pipeline at the moment, but um, apart from coming to these conventions and seeing you lovely people, <laughs> Would you, uh, and I'm curious, 
would you ever do anything more than uh, just acting? Would you become a director, a screenwriter, or...? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've directed a couple of music videos, which I absolutely loved. Um, so, that was really cool. It's very different being on that side of the camera. And uh, I would love to do more of it. Oh, yeah. Nice. yeah. I hope you do. Hi, Eliza. Um, really nice to see you here. Um, what is your favorite song? My favorite song, like of all time? Oh my gosh. Um, that's tricky. You know, I should always come to Q&As with that already in my mind. Um, it really depends on the day, you know, for me. And what's your favorite song today? My favorite song today is You and I by Ingrid Michaelson. Check it out. It's so cute. It's a really cute song, and I've been uh, I've been singing it to Henry lately, and he loves it. So that's that's why it's my favorite song. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. That's really cute that you can sing it to Henry. Hi. Um, I asked this question to Bob last time as well. Um, which character of the hundred do you most relate to? Do I most what? Most yes. relate to. Oh. What did Bob say? Uh, Monty. Monty? <laughs> That's good. It's a good one. Um, who do I most relate to? Oh my goodness, these are good questions. It's really a tough one. Um, and I like Monty, by the way. Great answer. I kind of want to say Jasper. <laughs> Person compared to a lot of the characters in the show, and I like to bring a bit of comic relief. So I'm going to say Jasper. Thank you. That's great. Well, in the same spirit of that question, if you wouldn't be playing Clark, which character would you love to play in the hundreds? Oh, there's so many cool characters, um, but I would love to play Murphy. Murphy? Yeah. Because he's got, he's so complicated, that guy, you know? He's got a real, he's got a real heart, but he can also, like, he can, he's also got a bit of, uh, darkness to him, so. I, like I love Murphy. I would love to see you play Murphy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi. Uh, my question is, uh, what was your favorite season to play? And why? I mean, I think my favorite season would have to be season one, just because it was, it was the beginning of, of something so incredible and um, it was my first American show and it was my first, um, it was just my first time on a real, really big scale production. Like there were so many more crew and bigger sets and it was just like the feeling that I got from, from shooting that first season was like, it was just adrenaline and joy, you know? Um, and the ones that followed, I loved as well, but I think season one is so nostalgic for me that that's got to be the season. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank, you. thank you. Well, also in the same spirit as this question, what is your favorite scene that you have seen on the whole show? You were like, oh my god, how did I make it? Um, do you know, I, it's not a scene, but I loved the season three finale in the City of Light. Yes. That was incredible. Lexa comes back, it's a, like it's, it, there's something so epic about that. And also putting out, putting this character who's just been in the, the woods in like a post-apocalyptic world, to put her in, um, you know, a, a, a sparkling clean city it was just a really interesting concept to me and I just thought that all of that was awesome. It's really great. Mm. I love that one too. Oh, is the microphone gone? <laughs> oh, technical difficulty. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> is it back? Hi, um, my question was, what was your favorite uh, Clark on Nexus? I'm sorry? Clark and Lexa. See. What was your favorite Clark? Favorite Clark. Clark. Sorry, favorite Clark and Lexa yes. scene? Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if there was so
so we did so many good scenes, but I loved this. I, I'm repeating myself, but I love the stuff in the City of Light. I just thought it was so. I don't know. It was romantic, but it was also full of action, and it was beautiful. Very well done. Thank she you. Yes. Great question. Thank you. Hello. What character would you describe yourself as? Sorry? What character would you describe yourself as? Character in... In, in, in the hundred? In the hundred or just no, from any movie or anime or I would probably say Jessica Day in New Girl. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a little bit awkward and quirky. And uh, I definitely have seen that show like 20,000 times. And, <laughs> And I relate to her a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. A great show, by the way. You, I love it. Yeah, you know, it's, my girlfriend used to watch it, and just, I'm sitting on the couch, very grumpy, and just, I'm starting to like it too. Yes. Don't, don't tell it to her. I won't. I won't. I, I know, I, I, I got Bob into it as well, and he was like, I'm not going to like the show. <laughs> exactly. You can't help but love it. <laughs> I have the whole same story. Yeah. Movie? My favorite Disney movie? Yes. Well, I the Little Mer the original Little Mermaid was like what I grew up on. In fact, I used to. Um, I wouldn't answer to my own name. I would only answer to Ariel um, for a good period of time when I was young because um, I wanted to be here. <laughs> Um, I'd say it's Moana because Henry loves Moana so much and it makes me love her as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, what, was it, what is it like for you, now that you're a mom, to watch all your own childhood memories again with, uh, with your kids? I love it. Yeah? Yeah, I really love it. It's so cool. And like, he's really into the Wiggles right now. Did you guys get the Wiggles here? Those are those little guys with the... No, that's Teletubbies. The Wiggles is like an Australian kids uh, musical group that was huge in, um, in Australia and I think in the US as well. And um, I'm now watching with Henry what I used to watch as a kid and I just, it's so much fun. Really? Yeah. I love it. Let's go to the dinosaur. Hello, dinosaur. Could you repeat it one more time into the microphone? What was your favorite moment in Alice Hall Set? What was your favorite moment in? What was your favorite memory in Alice Hall Set? It's really tough to. Oh, oh. favorite memory of Lisa on set. Favorite memory of Alicia on set. Um, oh, she's just the sweetest woman. Um, and we always, I think, you know, both being from Australia and both um, having a similar upbringing, it gave us so much ease. We were like immediately clicked and it was, you know, every, every scene with her was awesome. Um, I don't know if I have a, I mean, we're both obsessed with food, so anytime food came out, we were like little kids, um, especially candy. <laughs> so, um, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of good memories, but it's all about like little things, like nothing, nothing major that would excite people. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. For the question. <laughs> So nice to say for once, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm curious because we talk about a lot of nice things, but what is the toughest scene you had to shoot? And not only in the hundred, but your whole career. Oh my gosh. Just um, what, what was a living nightmare or hell? I think when um, when Clark and Anya are covered in mud in season two. I want to say that was season two. Um, we have this big fight scene and we're just covered head to toe in thick, sticky mud. And we were attracting flies 
and we were out in the woods and we had to be in it for like 14 hours and it was gross. It was, I've never been so uncomfortable. And we had to do a like a three minute fight scene. It, like it was an epic fight scene in all of that grossness. So that was a really, that was tricky. Oh, respect that you did it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, um, how was it to play with Lexa in a moment? I'm sorry, how was it? To play with Lexa in the 100. How was it to play with Lexa in the 100? It was amazing. I mean, you know, like I said, Alicia's such an incredible scene partner, incredible actor. She's so special and all the scenes we got to do together were incredible to shoot. So I had the best time and it was awesome to be able to represent a bisexual woman as well and on top of that that was that was really a gift so it was great <laughs> thank you thank you thank you let's go to the next one hi um i was wondering what was it like to see clark go from being the good guy turning into a morally ambiguous character okay i, I caught a couple of words but i i didn't get the whole question yes. What was it like for you to see Clara go from being the good guy turning into a morally ambiguous character? Morally ambiguous? Yeah, but it was like, like uh, unethical. And yeah, 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 yeah. It was really interesting. I mean, I think that's the you know that's an actor's dream really is to play someone who. I mean, that's human too. Is to um, sort of toe the line of what what is right and wrong. You know, it's a really interesting dichotomy and, and doing that with Clark, it felt like it was every episode there was something where, you know, she's making calls that might not necessarily be the right thing to do, but someone has to make them and, and as an actor justifying her actions to make it believable. So it was, I think it's really cool to play that and, it, and I got to do it all the time with Clark. <laughs> Okay, yeah, thank you. No, thank you. Uh, what was the worst decision that Clark made in the series? Because you made a lot of bad decisions. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, um, no oh gosh, I don't know. There were a lot. There was a lot of people died. <laughs> I think you know she had a lot of death on her hands, and that's. If, not if, good. if you could reverse one of those deaths, which one would it be? I need help. I need like audience participation on this. Um, Maybe. Sin. I heard about Sin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That I heard that. Yeah. yeah. I can. I can come back to this one later on. You can think about it. Okay. I'll think about it. Think about it. I'll think about it. <laughs> hey, um, was it hard to uh, shoot uh, season three, episode seven? You know, I mean, there have been so many great actors and characters that we've had that have had to go for numerous reasons. Um, and it's always sad, uh, especially when you think that you're not going to work with that person again. Um, in terms of the impact that it had on people, that was really heartbreaking. I think it Shooting it was one thing, but it was when we saw um, that it was how insensitive it was, like damaging to a lot of people. That you know, um, that's when it really felt bad, <laughs> you know. Um, but on the day, yeah, we, I mean, it was sad because Alicia was going, <laughs> and we were like, damn. But then. We got to see her again in the season finale, thank God. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Bye. No, thank you. Hi. Uh, just like Bardo, I've been thinking of strike proof questions beforehand. So, what is your typical coffee order? My typical coffee order? Oh, this is a much lighter question. Nice. <laughs> um, it's a bit. I feel embarrassed to 
say what my coffee order is. It's an oat milk vanilla latte. <laughs> So, I, it's, you know, I wish I could just say espresso, you know, but I like it sweet, milky, the whole deal. Thank you. A really great question. A re it was, but I'm embarrassed. It's very original. <laughs> Hi. Um, do you think Bellamy deserved a better ending? I mean, of course, yeah. That's a no-brainer. I mean, I... I understand, no I don't really understand, I don't, <laughs> um, I, I think that that could have been better, but at that point in time, I mean, there were a lot of things that we were confused by and um, we just had to kind of go with the flow, you know, and sell it as best we could, um, so yeah. <laughs> Alright, thank you. It was not, thank it could have been better. Could have been better. Could have been better. And now I'm curious, what was it like to work together with Bob on the hundreds? It was awesome! Yeah? Yeah! Wasn't it awkward or anything or...? Well, we weren't together for most of it. So we were just, we were friends, yeah. but um, we didn't get together until the very end. So it was, it was just always great. He was my favorite person to work with. And, Is it awkward to work together with? Nah. 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 This is awesome. It's just awesome. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Um, if you could change the ending of the hundreds, what would you change? <sighs> if I could change the ending, that's so tricky. I mean, there's a lot of characters that I would have loved to have seen at the at the end. You know. I wish there was a way that Bellamy could have ascended and then, oh, not not, as, not ascended, not died, but um, could have been there at the end. Um, and it would have been cool if Lexa was actually Lexa somehow, you know, and not just an embodiment of her. <laughs> um, real challenge with ending such a an incredible show. I mean, I don't think anyone was ever going to be fully satisfied with the ending. They had a really hard task and I think they did the best they could. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, Eliza. I'm always nice to meet you. Uh, I wanted to ask you uh, for you, what is the meaning of making a happy life? I heard happy life. Could you repeat it one more time? Uh, what, what, what is for you the meaning of living a happy life? What is the meaning of living a happy life? For me, I mean, for, for the longest time, ever since I was quite young, it was, work was the only thing that made me happy. And so I found myself, whenever a job ended, I found myself in sort of <laughs> existential crisis. <laughs> like, what am I if I'm not working? Because that's all I, I did from you know a really young age. Um, but now it's just, it's I've found this uh, a beautiful family. I've made a family, and um, my happiness is just spending time with them. It's also meditating. It's also eating well, sleeping well. You know all the all the really the quite basic <laughs> um, things that, contri that they contribute to my happiness, and I am very happy. Thank you for the question. That's a really nice uh, question, and uh, we're reaching the end of our panel right now. Oh my gosh, that went quick. It went really quick. Thanks for hanging around, guys. <laughs> uh, I have one last question, of course. If you give, can give one advice to the whole audience, what what would it be? What would you what would you want to give them in life? What advice? Um, I would just say, uh, for me personally, I can't speak for you guys, but um, I've spent a lot of time worrying about the future or stressing over things that have happened in the past, and just the importance of being present 
has changed my life and I would encourage everybody to to breathe and be present, baby. Nice. Well, thank you. Everybody, give it up for Eliza Taylor. Um, en ik zou zeggen tegen jullie, als je...